we would love to see your beautiful faces. Um, do I need to hit anything on this? I'm sorry. It says got. Okay, just got it. Okay, sorry. I'm not a team. I'm not a Zoom person. I'm a Teams person. Okay. So um, welcome everybody to our workshop today. Six M's for marketing. Uh, we appreciate you being here on time. My name, my name is Irene Luque, and I am the manager from the Business Research Center from Science Bank in Utah. We also have another business research center in Idaho, and the manager there is Gina Basir, and she is here with us today as well. And she's saying hi. <laughs> um, um, we here at the Business Research Center help inspire new or established entrepreneurs to start, expand, and finance their business venues by providing knowledge, tools, and guidance for, for success. We offer guidance by business plans, financial projections, and loan packaging. We do want to let you know if for some reason um, you want to have an additional consultation with us, um, after this workshop, either you are looking to get um, experts referrals or just want to talk one-on-one -on -one about a loan or, or um, just your business in general. Even though we are part of Science Bank, we help everyone, regardless who you um, financial institution is, feel free to reach out to us. Um, now I want to introduce to you our, our amazing speaker today. His name is Peter Brooks. He started his advertising agency in 1984. His goals are to help you increase your sales and decrease your marketing costs through online and offline um, methods that are target tested and measurable. Now I want to turn the time over to Peter Brooks. Irene, it's just a pleasure to be here. This is one of my favorite topics to talk about. Don't let the age fool you. I am up. I am hip. The only thing that's changed since 1984 is the media has gotten faster and better and online, and we're going to talk about that today. My presentation today is called Mastering the Six M's of Marketing. This is my way of trying to take the complex world of marketing and making it make sense. And the six M's I'm going to introduce to you one at a time that we're going to spend some time on each one of them. They need to be done in order. Before I introduce the six M's, I want to read a quote out of an old school book that I'm reading again right now. It's called Ogilvy on Advertising. And this book is old, and uh, but timeless. This is David Ogilvy talking. He says, I do not regard advertising as entertainment or an art form, but as a medium of information. When I write an advertisement, I don't want you to tell me that you find it creative. I want you to find it so interesting that you buy the product. Then he was quoting something out of ancient Greek mythology. When Achilles spoke, they said, how well he speaks. But when Demosthenes spoke, they said, let us march against Philip. People get confused that, uh, between advertising and marketing. Marketing is the big picture. It's everything that you do to help draw in business to your, uh, your, your company. Um, since I do not know all of you, and since I only see a couple of faces, this is going to be a general presentation. Um, if you would like, after this presentation, to go to my website and talk to me some more, um, fill out my contact form, and I will talk to you for free. My website is mymarketingstinks.com, and I have a contact form on there, and you can learn more about me. Let me introduce the six M's by something that my buddy Jim Heron has never seen. Jim and I go back many years, and he's excited because he thinks, oh, I'm going to get the same thing today. No, today is different. Do you remember this device from the Da Vinci Code? Back in, uh, I think it was 2003, Tom, uh, Tom Hanks was in this movie, and it was about, you know, the Bible and things like that. And the secrets in the movie Da Vinci Code were, were kept in this codex, if you will. I think that's what it was called. And in my particular codex, there are six rings, and there's 26 letters so that you can set your um, you know, you code the way you want. I, somebody told me you can do over 300,000 different codes. Well, I only have one code on here. 
My six M's are like this. And when I say my six M's, it's not like I've invented marketing. I'm just trying to make it simple for you so that you can say, you know what? Our marketing stinks. And here's why. And some questions that you want to ask yourself. Um, so you, you get these all lined up. My first M is your market. Who are you targeting? My second M, by the way, this is on my website. So you read about it later on. My second M is your motives. Why are you marketing? The third M is your message. What are you trying to say to the world? Your fourth M is the media, which everybody likes to talk about. The fifth M is um, the measurement. Are you measuring what's working and what's not? And the sixth M is map. Do you, do you have like a plan? I mean, what, what is your plan for doing? And if you get all these lined up and you get them lined up in the right way, you open up the secret to marketing. And sorry, it's kind of hard to see, but this is the secret to marketing. This is this is sales. This is good stuff happening. This is when you um, realize that the, your, your marketing efforts are working. And, and so let me, let me tell you a little bit of history before I get into the six M's of marketing. Uh, I started in 1984 between, before um, internet media and things like that. And back in the day, I thought I was in the creative business. I thought that my job was to be so interesting and so engaging that people would look at my advertisements and say, ah, oh, absolutely wonderful. Just, oh, you're doing so good here. Until I met David J. Phillips. David J. Phillips was a client in uh, Laguna Hills, California. I'm from Southern California. And um, this was in Laguna Hills and he had an auto dealership, um, David J. Phillips, Buick, Pontiac and Mazda. And he hired me uh, back in 1988 to help him sell cars. Uh, and I convinced him that we needed to be creative. And so I convinced him also that we needed to use TV as the medium. And he bought me. He, he, he believed me and we did it. I hired a company to help me produce some TV commercials. They were funny. They were good, like, like Super Bowl quality, I thought. I just, I just thought they were just so interesting. I thought they made him stand out different. Well, we spent a lot of money on these TV commercials. He said, you know, I'll give you some time. And I think we, we did it for a month or two. And I was hoping and praying that something would happen. So I finally went back to David J. Phillips and I said, Mr. Phillips, I got some good news. These TV commercials that we produced uh, have won us, my company, uh, a Clio Award, um, C-L-I-O. A Clio Award is an award for creativity in communications. And I had this big plaque and I said, isn't this wonderful that David J. Phillips has hired an award-winning advertising agency. And uh, David J. Phillips taught me the lesson that I'll never forget. He fired me on the spot. He said, your creativity was so creative that you forgot that the purpose of marketing was to move people uh, to buy my cars. Uh, we, we, we did the commercials and we didn't get one up. And up is when a salesman at the a dealership stands up and he has to go or she has to go greet somebody. He said, we didn't get one up. I am done with you. And this guy was worth 50% of my income back at the time. And so I went to my 1973 Ford Pinto, sat in a car, and I cried myself as I was driving home. And I said, why am I in this business? What am I doing? And uh, it was the biggest wake-up call that I had. And at that particular point, at, at that point, I decided that I would never again be in the creative business, that whenever I worked for a, um, a, a client, the purpose would be to help that client make the phone ring, get a hit to the website, have a postcard returned, have visitors, have results. And since then, I, I, that, that's all I do. Is, is, and that's what I'm going to teach you right now. So let's, let's go over these six M's and save your questions. I'm going to sit around and chat with you for a bit here. Um, let me go through all these and then, then we can, we can talk some more about your specific business. And I hope that we get to talk about your specific business today. M1 markets. Try to imagine that, um, your business is a, a sunflower and the dirt is the market. The most important thing, the stem is your product and that's what you're selling and what you're offering to the, um, the, 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 the world. A lot of times people just create a product and they don't even think about the market. They don't think, well, I, I don't even know there's a market for this or, or it might be too crowded of a market, but the M1 is um, the, the market. And you only have three markets, by the way. You have um, family, 
which are people that have given money to you. Another word is customers. The second market you have are friends, people that have uh, contacted you or you've contacted them and they haven't bought from you yet, but, but they know who you are and you know who they are. Uh, and the third market you have are um, uh, prospects. And prospects are people that are in your trading area um, that could and should buy what your um, product is, but they just don't know anything about you. So yeah, friends, excuse me, family, friends, prospects. And your most important market, um, by the way, is friends. Um, I had a client one time, and I'm, I'm trying to give stories that are relevant. Again, I don't know your businesses. Uh, so these are, these are general principles that work. So I had this client, happened to be my brother-in-law, who started a business called Top Tech Auto. And he worked out of his home. He was, he was um, a small little business. Um, he fixed the cars in his oversized garage, and, uh, but he had no business. He kept on advertising elsewhere. He would, we, he would send out postcards to neighbors that didn't even know him. He would advertise uh, on like local journals and stuff like that. And I said, Paul, what we need to do is we need to choose one market at a time. And this is a very key rule, by the way. You choose one market. And let's go after that market. And if I die during this presentation and you get one thing out of this, this, this little presentation today, your most important market are your family. That if you had a customer list of 100 people, that is where we would start marketing your business. We would, it's called marketing from within. You, you start from with what you have and you work your way out. Most people have the mentality of marketing from without, meaning you wanna reach people that are not customers right now and you, you spend all your time in the prospect lamb. So back to my story. Um, I'd say, Paul, how many people have you helped over the last couple of years? And he says, I have probably 120 people on my mailing list. And I said, what are you doing to that market? He says, nothing. If they want me, they'll call me. And I says, no. No, 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 that's not marketing. That's not advertising. That's sitting around like a little stuffed pig underneath the tree and hoping the apples are going to hit you on the head. Let's do something very simple. And what we did was I said, step number one is, is create your mailing list. Make sure you have a list that the, you have accurate addresses and uh, we can reach them. Uh, for this particular campaign, since we knew where our, our market was, we um, were going to use direct mail. Um, we didn't need to use any other media because direct mail is very powerful if you know who you're reaching. We wrote a letter, a one-page letter that was sincere, that was honest, that was persuasive, that had a, a call to an action, that was informative. There was no fluff in there. It was talking exactly why you should hire Paul to um, do your, fix your car. We sent out the letter. In a plain envelope, we created a new little logo for him. And since people didn't know him, we put Paul on the, Paul Wigerman was his name. We put his name on the outside of the envelope so that people knew that the envelope coming was from a friend, not junk mail. Because you with me here, a list of 120, a black and white letter, a number 10 envelope. The, um, the return address was from a friend and a first class stamp. None of this bulk mail in this particular case. So we mailed this out and he got a 9% return, meaning 10 people out of that list of 120 people called back and set up an appointment to fix their car. Why? Because he laser focused in on, on that market. And that's rule number one. Your marketing stinks if you are advertising to everybody. Your marketing does not stink if you are advertising to the one and you know exactly who that market is. So if I was going to give you an assignment uh, and I took my own medicine a couple of years ago. I've been in business since 1984. And in the old days, I would take anybody that would uh, breathe in a mirror. You know, I mean, if they, if, if they breathed and they had a check that would clear, I'd, I'd take them. Not anymore. I have 10 requirements now for when I deal with people that I know exactly, exactly the kind of customers that I'm going for in my particular business. So that's your assignment. Number one is define your market. And I don't want generalities. If you're an accountant, say, well, I'm looking for bookkeeping type jobs. No, no, no. I want you to be so specific that you say, I want people in this particular area with this particular problem that match this particular criteria. And if you do that, that, that is the first thing on my little cryptex here. And that is a very important one. Okay, so you're with me there? Let's move on to number two. Number two, motives. So you've decided who your market is now. What are your motives? 
you would be absolutely amazed at what people have as far as their motives. Um, my motives uh, is to increase my brand. I have a good brand. And I said, How, okay, that's, that's fine. How do you make money off a, a better brand? Well, when, when people know me, they're going to trust me. And I said, okay, that is a motive. Okay, number two motive. A lot of times people have the motive of, um, well, my boss says that we need to spend 3% of our gross sales on marketing and advertising. So we are doing it. My, my motive is to have action. If I was going to, uh, a lesson that I've learned over the years, and it's a real good lesson, is I call it the marketing staircase, where I try to move my prospects, the people that should be buying from me, but don't know much, they don't even know me yet, to move them up the ladder a little bit. Say a lot of times people want them to go all the way up to the top of the staircase is, and that is call, set an appointment, and then hire. Not me. I just want to get your phone number, or I just want you to raise your hand and say, I'm interested in this uh, possibly. Then I work you over time. Um, I had a client in uh, California, another, another story. Sorry, I got, I got some stories today and I love the stories and I find them interesting. So, if, you know, in, indulge me here. Um, Years ago, we were hired by uh, Catalina Island. Have you been there? It, it's on, it's Avalon, uh, 26 miles off of um, the coast of California. And our job was to, um, their motive <clears throat> was to increase tourism. And in the old days, they would do normal advertisements and they, they would do, um, this is a different brochure than I just showed you. This is what is called a rack brochure just a small little brochure that goes in hotels and, you know, places like that. You've seen them all the time. And what they would do in the old days with Catalina Island was they would um, just say, come to Catalina. We have bison. We have the casino. Uh, we have a small little beach. We have restaurants. And as I talked to the chamber of commerce, who was my client, um, that was a fun client. We I had to go over there every two weeks. I just love islands. Let me focus. I grew up in Hawaii. And so anytime I talk about an island, I get all excited. Every two weeks, we'd go over there and we would talk about what are we really trying to do? And as we talked and we discovered the motives of the Chamber of Commerce, the motive was to get people to the island of Catalina at the right time when the person was willing to um, come. And to make a long story short, we changed the whole approach of their little mailer. And in the old days, we would have a call to action in there that would say, if you would like a guide on the island of Catalina, call us up, we will mail you one. Well, this little catalog is like 44 pages long. And to mail something like this, you have to put it in a number 10 envelope. It takes two stamps. And you know, today's rate, that's you know, 75 cents or thereabouts. And we don't even know if they were serious about going to the island of Catalina. So we changed the motive of their mailer. And it's kind of hard to see here. And this down here is a fill in the blank type of a form. And if somebody was serious about coming to Catalina, the call to action was really quite simple. If you'd like to come to the island of Catalina, send us a dollar per guide for postage and handling, and we'll ship one off right away to you. What happened was, is that people filled this out. The serious people were able to pull a buck out of their wallet, put it in an envelope, and mail it to us. And we were able to have two things happen. First of all, 100% of our marketing costs were covered, meaning that the printing of this big 48-page catalog now was covered. The postage was covered and we created a mailing list. Good idea. A lot of times people are so eager in their motives as to, uh, uh, to move people up the ladder, you know, the staircase of marketing that they, they forget. Let's just get them up to the first step. And what we did with Catalina, and I don't know how you're going to apply this your to your business, but what we did with Catalina was we found out we had people actually raise their hands by giving us a dollar and um, sending it off uh, to, get, to get this catalog. And that is the lesson on your motives. Let's go to M3. Again, there's gonna be time to talk about your business in a minute. So be patient here. M3, oh, okay, so back to motives. Here's your assignment. Your assignment on motives 
is to ask yourself, how can I get people to move up one step on my marketing staircase closer to becoming my customer? Okay, let's go to number three, message. The only thing you have to remember about me, your message are your headlines, your message are your body copy, your message is what you put on your Facebook ad, your message is the, uh, uh, what you put in your email, whether it be online or offline media. The message are the words that you're using and the images that you're using to um, get people to, to react to your advertising and your marketing. Uh, there's only one thing you need to know about message, W-I-I-F-M. What's in it for me? Anytime somebody sees a message, they're asking the one question, what's in it for me? Now, today, Irene sent out a message about this particular workshop today. Um, I'm not sure exactly all that she said, but all of you here that are here right now, uh, when you saw that message come across your email or however you got the message, you asked yourself, is this going to be worth my time? What's in it for me? I mean, I, am I willing to give up an hour to meet with somebody I really don't even know? And uh, what am I going to leave with? And if you can remember that in all of your messaging, um, that's the question that people are asking. We live in, I call it the over-communicated society. I remember when I was growing up, um, my, my dad, um, we had a TV. We had a black and white TV. We had rabbit ears on it. And the remote control was me. I mean, dad would say, Pete, get up and go change it to ABC, NBC, or CBS, right? And then we got P PBS, and ah, you know, that's, that's, that's incredible. Today, today, look, look at your life. L look, at, look at how much is coming to you right now. I can guarantee you that all of you right now have a cell phone, and that within the last 20 minutes of being here with me, that some kind of communication has come there, and you look at it. You, you, we just can't help it because we are being bombarded on all sides right now. And now we have these devices that are bombarding with not only truth, but untruths. So, so the message, so what you're doing all day long, the reason I tell you that we are in the over-communicated society is that what we do all day long is, to, is basically say, no, 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 I'm just, I'm not going to do that. You do it when you get your mail. When you get your mail, you automatically put it into two stacks, whether you know it or not. Stuff of value, stuff that is not of value. The good stack will have bills. Sorry, that's a value. It'll have wedding announcements. It'll have checks. It'll have offers that you see. The bad stack um, is stuff that is just not, not for you. And so as you're crafting your messages, you need to um, ask yourself, what does my market really want to hear? Remember, this is the reason we do this in order. You always start with your market. You always start with your market. And I know that some of you are probably saying, well, I have multiple markets. Here's, here's my advice. You need to go after one market at a time. You, you cannot go after multiple markets. I have two interesting stories. Just a minute, I lost my phone. Two interesting stories. And these are true stories. These are, these are actual clients. I had a client who was in the business of noni juice. And by the way, I'm not advocating or dissing um, multi-level marketing or that particular market, but I had a person hire me uh, because he had noni juice. And I don't know if you've ever met with people of noni juice and, and other multi-level marketing companies. A lot of times the claims are, um, are really strong. I mean, proven or not, I don't know, but they're very strong. So he said, I have this book that I want to sell to people. And it's a book written by Neil Solomon. And I want you to create a brochure to sell this book. And I said, well, tell me what Noni does, you know, what he does. And it's kind of hard for you to see. So let me hold it back here just a little bit here. Uh, the headline, I'm going to read it to you in just a minute. This is the actual brochure that we created. I have proof that we actually did this. It didn't work, by the way. And I'll tell you, you'll, you'll know why in a minute. So we're talking about messaging right now. Okay. And when you message, you always want to uh, get into the mind of your, your customer and say, what do they want? What they're asking, what's in it for me? Here's the headline of this brochure. If you know someone who suffers from high blood pressure, heart disease, stroke, diabetes, cancer, smoking, allergies, digestion, or sleep, are you with me here? Do you see the problem already? This book could save their lives. 
discover the remarkable research about the amazing and miraculous healing powers of Tahitian noni juice, written by Johns Hopkins trained physician Neil Solomon. Over 300,000 have been sold. The problem was, is that, okay, by, by the way, Tahitian noni may help this. That's not my point. My point is, is that he should have gone after one market, and he eventually did, by the way. He went after the cancer market, and he got a little more results there. So when you're when you're, you're doing your messaging, don't try to be all things to all people. Get into the mind of your target market, who you're talking to, whether it be the customer, whether it be somebody just shopping you, or whether it be somebody out in this universe of people that couldn't buy from you. What, what, what's, what's in their mind? See, this is where you need to spend the most of the, your time, because once you get into the mind and the heart and the soul of your customer, rather than yourself, you're, you're going to have so much more power in your marketing. Don't take this the wrong way, and I'll look you in the eyes on this one. People don't care about you, okay? They don't, they don't care about your products. All day long, they're, they're, they're caring about themselves. They're picking up their kids from school, and what am I going to make for dinner, and why does my back hurt, and they don't care about you. What they do care is the solutions that uh, that you could offer. One of my biggest clients was in the 90s. I know this is an old example. I have some current examples, but this is an old example. But it, it is uh, probably one of the most successful things that ever happened to me and this particular client. I had a client uh, in Sherman Oaks, California, and the name of the company was called K. Cots and Associates. And what David K. did back in 1994 was he invented an industry that did not exist yet. Remember, go back to my analogy of the sunflower. The dirt is the market. The stem are your products. By the way, the leaves are your marketing. Okay, that's your marketing efforts. And the, the seeds, that's profits. It's making money. That's good stuff here. So David Kay discovered a market in Southern California. And the market was the tax delinquent market. And the way he found this, he had a partner, uh, John Cotts. And uh, they put their heads together and they said, hey, there's a lot of people out there who owe the IRS back taxes. And uh, they did their homework and found out that there were a ton of people that were delinquent. I've been delinquent before, and I've had the IRS reach into my bank account 30 years ago. I will never forget the experience. I mean, it's a real thing. So David Kay and John Cotts got together and they formed this company to rescue people from the IRS. And this is pre-internet, by the way. And by the way, as I said in the very beginning, uh, the only thing that's changed since I've started in 1984 is the media. Um, messaging is the same. Markets are the same. Motors are the same. Yeah, nothing, nothing's changed really except the, uh, the media. has. We, we have more choices and more immediate choices. So back in the day, we advertised um, in almost every daily newspaper in, Southern, in, in, in California, all the way from the Bay Area down to Southern California. And before they hired me, they were doing ads that measured about this size. They were about four inches by two inches. Um, and the ads were creative. Um, they were getting the phone to ring. Uh, they had 1-800, not, excuse me, 1-800 one, 1 number uh, that they used. And uh, the, the ad that they used was a picture of um, a guy that looks scared. <sighs> and the headline says, do you owe the IRS? If so, call us and we will help you. And they had their logo on there, which took up space. And I said, yeah, you're, you're getting response. At least we have a base to test off of, right? You know, at least we can measure what's working and, and what's not working. And I said, let's try some new things. And I said, before we write some ads, so I tr we tried some ads. And before we started writing the ads, I asked the owners of the company, I said, do you mind if I sit face to face with the, um, uh, the pe people that you meet with. And so I sat in the room as the, the salesman and the representatives would talk to these people who owed past due taxes. It was the best thing that I could do. In fact, any client that uses me now should have me do that, meaning I, I need to become smart. I need to know what's going on inside the heart and the mind of these customers. And I learned several things. The people feared the IRS. The people... Uh, didn't know what to do. They had no hope. The people were tired of getting uh, letters from the IRS. They were tired of getting calls. They were tired of getting levies and wage garnishments and all this kind of stuff. So we created an ad. We created several ads and we tested the ads. That's my fifth M, measuring what's going on. And over time, we 
created an ad and I blew this ad up so you can see it. So it's kind of big and stuff like that. This is the ad. It's, it measures only four inches wide by two inches tall, but it's, it's big. Do you notice something about this ad? It looks like a news story. Um, we got rid of the logo. We um, made it look like it fit within the LA Times or the San Diego Union or Orange County Register. We made it appear like it was an article. At the top of the ad, we had to put in there, there was an advertisement and stuff like that. So we tested this ad. And I remember we ran it on a Sunday and the next Monday morning, that very next day after we tested this ad for the very first time, when we, sorry, you can't see that. There you can see that now. We tested this ad for the very first time. David K called me up that morning on Monday and he says, I can't find our ad. He was swearing. I can't find our ad. Where is it? And I said, we're in the Tribune. We're here. We're here. We're here. And he, I can't find it. And I said, okay, be patient. Let me make sure that it ran even, you know, because it was a test and it cost us a lot of money. By the afternoon, David Kay called me back and he says, I apologize. I apologize. Even though I could not find the ad, the phone is ringing off the hook. And I said, what's happened? He says, it worked. It, it, the, the message was so strong that it reached our market. Remember, this is all in order here. Our goal was to reach the market of tax delinquents. The motive was to get them to pick up the phone and call. And the, me, uh, the message in this particular case, believe it or not, here's the headline that, that worked. Um, and sometimes I understand, why did this headline work? Here's the headline. Taxpayers who owe the IRS must read this before April 15th. Okay. By the way, the headline is where most of your money is spent. The subject line is where most of your money is spent. In fact, 80% of your uh, the people will read the headline only and nothing else. But then after that, we got into specifics here. We can tell you, uh, this is the closing part of it. We can tell you over the phone and in confidence without the IRS knowing that you're calling us, whether we can help you or not free over the phone. That was the call to action. See, I found out in the meetings when I met with these IRS people, uh, excuse me, the people that were had IRS problems, they were afraid that um, the IRS was making the calls. They were afraid the IRS was watching. This particular ad ran um, for three years without a change. We, we, we found out what worked. The ad was so successful that the calls um, tripled in one day. They tripled in one day. All because I'm following these six M's. Number one, I knew my market. I knew what was going on inside the head and the heart of the tax delinquent. Number two, I knew our, my, my motive. My motive was to get them to pick up the phone. And I knew my message. My message was call right now. So messaging, here's your assignment. Go through all of your messaging and ask yourself, am I ans asking the question? Am I answering the question, what's in it for me? It's just, it's just really that simple. And that's the hardest thing to do in marketing and advertising, by the way. Let's move on to number four, media. This is the easiest thing to do. The media is your umbilical cord from you to your markets. The media could be the way you answer your phone. It could be online, Facebook, email, things like that. And by the way, that's what everybody wants to do right now. You don't want to put all your eggs in that particular basket, especially, and I'll tell you why, I'll tell you why right now before I forget. Um, when I started, the major media was Yellow Pages. How many of you use a Yellow Page now, right? Nobody does. And I had many clients that they put all of their eggs in that media basket of uh, Yellow Pages. And when Yellow Pages went, Yellow Pages in Southern California, it must have been three or four inches thick. And you put it in there once and you prayed during the year that you did the right thing and that people would see it. Um, you want to be wary, too, of putting all your eggs in the Facebook basket or the Google basket or the Google Words basket or whatever because they control. And my advice is that you have a table that's sitting on the table is you have multiple media. Um, there's four major media. Uh, the, my favorite is personal media, uh, word of mouth, face-to-face uh, -face with somebody, uh, on the telephone with talking to somebody. I love personal media because it's personal. My second favorite media is direct mail. I am a direct mail nut. Um, it, when I can do direct mail, 
uh, I will do that more than anything because it's a direct method to getting to people. Third media is offline media. Um, offline would be like billboards, um, newspapers, magazines. Um, they're still, val still valuable. I don't know if you notice your mailbox on Tuesdays normally that you get a bunch of junk mail. Um, the reason you get a bunch of junk mail is because that printed old school method still works, still, still brings in business for a lot of businesses. And the fourth media would be um, uh, online stuff. And that's the only thing that has changed uh, over the years with me. So here's my story. Uh, and this is a company that you know, they're no longer a client, and, but they're still friends. Um, Cypress Credit Union uh, years ago hired us to create their logo and they're still using that logo. I hate the logo, but we did it. Hey, they paid their bills, right? You know, what can I say? <laughs> anyway, they also wanted us to help. This is back in the day. We got Cypress Credit Union as a client when they had only three locations and they were more in the West Valley, Cyprus, you know, that, that part of the world. And they said, we're going to do um, radio as our media. Right now I'm talking about media. And I says, why are you doing radio? And they says, because we have a cool jingle. And I says, yes, you do have a cool jingle. <laughs> Does anybody care? You know, you know, uh, and I can't even sing it anymore. But I, he said, yeah, we're going to do radio. So what happened was they do radio and radio would reach all the way from, I don't know, North Salt Lake City, all the way down to Utah County. But keep in mind that they only had three locations, which were in West Valley. And I said, that's kind of a waste, don't you think? And they said, no, we want to reach everybody. Now, today, radio is good because they have lots of locations. But if I was Cypress Credit Union, and this is what we recommended, we did our homework, M1. We found out that the majority of the Cypress Credit Union customers were within a five-mile radius. Hmm, interesting. Number two, motives. We found out that the biggest motive of choosing a credit union was, of course, it's honest and trustworthy and all that kind of stuff, which is assumed, but location. People like doing banking by um, their location. Message, they didn't have a strong message. Um, it was their, their slogan and stuff like that. But media is where they blew it on their buying. And we suggested that they do direct mail around a five mile radius around each of their locations. I don't have a success story on this one because I never did it. And um, we just moved on and parted friends and it was a good thing here too. So here's your, here's your rule. Media, media is, is the easiest thing to do. If reaching your customers, that's your, your, your family, that's the easiest list of all to reach. You can reach them via email, uh, phone call, direct mail, whatever even a even a face-to-face -face visit is 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 easy the next market out the shoppers i call those your friends uh they're also easy to reach if you have been um capturing their information and uh, the prospect land um make sure that you are laser focused on who you're targeting okay two more the last two are pretty easy number five is measure measure everything that you're doing if you are not measuring or you cannot measure, um, your marketing stinks. If, if you think that, um, I won't say that because that's going to be mean. If you're not measuring what's working and not working, your marketing is not doing as well as you can. Everything can and should be measured, including every media that you use. Uh, for example, you all have business cards. At least you should have a business card. The business card should be a sales tool. And it should be something measurable that when you hand out your business card to somebody, you know whether somebody um, responded to, to that or not. We had a, a client, we still have this client. Um, it's called Express Bill Pay. And I'm looking for my example right now. Express Bill Pay uh, is an online bill paying company. And if you live in one of 700 companies, uh, excuse me, cities, uh, you pay your bills through Express Bill Pay. And our real market though, is the finance directors and the people in the cities who um, are making the decision of whether to use express bill pay or not. So I learned about finance matters. I, I learned about the people that were taking the bills in the cities. I learned about their problems of opening up envelopes and things like that. And came to find out as I was learning about these businesses that it's a real pain for these people to take payments. Uh, it, it's a slow process. Have you ever called up 
and actually worked with somebody and said, Hey, my social, I mean, excuse me, my credit card number is 4417, you know, and it's slow and painful. Well, Express Bill Pay takes the pain out of taking bill payments. Um, back when I got this client in 2005, they did not have probably no less, uh, they had 25, 50 cities that were businesses. So we created, again, this is um, just to show you what we did. This was the letter that we created. And if you look right up here, there is a, a jar of aspirin. And the headline on this says, is your current online payment provider giving you headaches? And we talked to them about all the reasons that they should talk to us and stuff like that. Well, because we knew exactly who we we're going after, we only had about two or 300 people that we were mailing to. We decided to use a media uh, that we know would get opened, and that was the 3D mailer. So we went online and bought a bunch of generic aspirin bottles and created these custom labels. Sorry, you can't see that very well. And we peeled it off. Hang on a sec. See, it peels off a little bit here. And we put it on the aspirin jars. And we mailed it out in a padded envelope. Yeah, it costs an arm and a leg, but we're looking for effectiveness here, right? And we're and and you, we 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 knew the lifetime value of these customers, and we mailed it off. And um, not everybody picked up the phone and called. However, our sales team picked up the phone and said, "Hey, did you get our jar of aspirin?" Again, step by step, right? Not can can I set up a meeting? No. Did you get my jar of aspirin? And 100% of the time, okay, 99% of the time, the, yeah, I got that. That was clever. Uh, we love it. We'd love to see you. We don't want to see you, whatever. It it, worked. it was measurable. We knew by how many people picked up and said, yeah, we got it, whether it worked or not. So my lesson on measurement is simple. Measure it. Measure everything. Do you remember that story about the tax um, company, KCOTS? Down the road, uh, we were advertising in no less than 30 daily newspapers every week. So we, again, this is pre-internet, okay? The, the, the principles uh, apply for, for internet uses right now too. But we bought um, 30 different 800 numbers. We got a computer system that every time somebody dialed that number, it would automatically count where that 800 number came from. And we were with exactness able to measure um, the cost on, on how to get each call from each media. Some were $9 a call, some were $90 a call. And we were able to measure that and spend our money um, efficiently and effectively because we knew right where our money was coming. That was number five. Okay, number six, and I'm almost done, I promise. Number six is a map. A map is figuring out what you're going to do with the first five steps. And um, when, when, when you put together a map, I believe that marketing plans should be written on the back of a cocktail napkin. I, I think they should be that simple. What's number one, who's your market? Number two, what's your motive? Number three, what's your WIIFM message? Number four, what media are we going to use to reach that one market? Number five, are we able to measure this sincerely? Are we able to figure out what's working and what's not? And that's that's what mapping is 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 all about. So this is everything you need to know about marketing. The six M's of marketing, um, always starting and doing it in order. Um, now, some of you are already having success right now without even hearing me. That's because you are spending all your time, money, and effort in media, uh, which is wonderful. Uh, you know, you're, you're, if you're having success, wonderful. And if you know why you're getting it, that's, that's good, too. I'll give you two, two you know, pluses on that one. But keep in mind, do you remember that? that ad that I showed you that was only four inches by two inches. Same amount of space. Ad A got 100 calls. Ad B got 300 calls. Same amount of space. And what I'm trying to do is that with the amount of money and the effort that you're spending on marketing, that it becomes efficient, that you become a, a marketing maverick, that, that when you turn on your marketing machine, that you are indeed attracting the right um, people to, to, to come to your business. I absolutely love marketing. Uh, of course, I guess to a carpenter, everything is a nail. To me, the most important part of any business is marketing. I've been with a lot of companies. I'm not going to tell you the failure companies that I've worked with. Uh, they've forgotten these things. One of my um, pool companies just went out of business because um, on the, their particular marketing plan, 
they could not reach people that wanted to buy pools in Utah. And uh, they, you know, and, and we, we, we want you to have success and, and making the phone ring. I believe that marketing is the, the heartbeat of any type of a company. If you have a good marketing plan and a good product to go with it, remember my little marketing sunflower, if you have a good product um, and you, you will be able to attract the right people in this noisy and, and uh, uh, you know, uh, over-communicated society. But anyway, that's, that's it. Okay, so now it's 945. And now that you've heard about me, um, let's talk and and hear what you have to say um it's, it's open mic night right now peter uh this is ahmed from the business resource center i wanted to you know first of all to thank you for the, all these wonderful information that you provided uh and you hit it right on the head you know this is uh amazing but i wanted to ask you what kind of advice you would give to a small business owners where they are just about to start as you know the world of marketing it's an ocean of ways and things that you can do to promote yourself and you, and you mentioned traditional channels and um, and you mentioned also the digital channels as well and how important of having both but what's your advice to small business owners when they have a small budget they don't know which direction to go okay and what they um, need to do so what is your advice for them it's it's really really quite simple i would narrow cast is the word that i'm going to use right now Meaning, go back to the M1, go back to the market and choose one market. And when you're choosing one market, it can't be so small that you can't make money off of it. Little side story, Ahmed. I had a client in California who came to me with these three metal balls that she had manufactured in China. She'd already created her product. And I said, what do these balls do? And they said they get rid of any health problems that you have. And I said, I don't know how you're going to reach your, your, your market. I mean, you're, you're, it's such a wide claim. You need to narrow down what you're going to do. And that's, that's probably a poor example. I didn't use her as a client here, but for, for the small business starting out, I would know my market inside and out. I would know what they wanted and what they felt. Um, I would know their demographics, you know, age, uh, you know, address and stuff like that. More importantly, I know their psychographics. I would know what's going on in here. And um, I, I've seen too many people hang up a shingle and say, um, I'm, I'm shoe repair. Okay, that's wonderful, your shoe repair. And this is probably a poor example, but it, I'm going to give it to as an example. If I was going to start a shoe repair business, I would call, create a shoe repair business for people uh, that were cowboys. Okay, now that's a narrow market. And I don't even know if there's a big enough market for it. But, but that is step number one is I, I, I know exactly who I'm going after. Step number two. And I do this all the time to my clients and they don't take my advice. I'm giving you some free advice right now. You can take it or leave it. I don't care. Nobody's on the clock with me right now. So I don't care if you take it or not. All of you have, okay. I would start with my, my family. Do you have any customers? No, I don't. Okay, fine. Okay. If you do, let's go to the next level up. Do you have any friends? Yeah, I have a lot of friends. Okay. What I would do, and by the way, Ahmed, this works every time. I would write a letter to every one of your friends and tell your friends what your business is. It's an elevator pitch in writing. Um, I have a whole course on how to create an elevator pitch. An elevator pitch is what you are saying to somebody if you're writing up an elevator and you have only 30 seconds to tell them who you are, how I can help you, and what my next step is. And for uh, the business starting out, I would reach out to my friends and family and say, do you know anybody that does this? Okay, you've done that. That's great. There's 100 to 200 people on that list. The third thing that I would do is I would uh, get a direct mail list. Uh, excuse me. I would do this either on Facebook or I would do it direct mail. Again, this is kind of a general question. Uh, for print, uh, if you know exactly who you're going to, we marketing guys can reach uh, almost anybody. For example, if you said to me, I want to reach all women in Saratoga Springs, um, who are not 100% white, by the way, this is not prejudice, this is marketing, this is, you know, finding out who I want, who are between the ages of 30 and 50 and have children, um, there is a list for that particular market, if you know that that is your market that is, that is buying. And uh, yeah, so it, most people just come out of the, they, they create the product first, they, they, they create a product without even thinking, well, whose problem am I solving? You know, and, and if you know whose problem you're solving, 
then you'll be able to reach them. Now, remember I said, okay, start with your customers. That's where you always want to start. You always want to start with the people that are giving you money because they're the ones that are going to go out and spread the news via social media or just talking to each other and say, yeah, I love this, this company. I've, I've dealt with this company. So kind of a long answer, Ahmed. Um, I would always start, the summary, I would start out knowing exactly who I'm going after. And I start from within working my way out. I'd start with my circle of influence. That's your friends. And say, this is what I'm trying to do. And then get the word out. Most people just shoot an ad out or they put a billboard up. And um, one of my company customers right now is a company called Truck Ranch. And um, um, yeah, they, they're, they're everywhere. You know, they just, they, they put up all these billboards, but the, the, by the way, they're not a customer. They're a competitor to my real client. They are outspending um, my other client um, and that's called Utah Truck Country in Lehigh, outspending them 10 to 1. But Utah Truck Country is smarter because they're going right after the right truck people. They're not putting billboards up. You know, those billboards on I-15 can cost you anywhere from 100 to 200 bucks a day. That, that, that adds up really quick. And you got to sell a lot of trucks. To, to have that kind of stuff happen. So, gotcha. um, yeah, gotcha. so I'm in a long answer. I'm sorry for that. The, 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 the short thing, I always start with the customers. If you know the dirt that you're going after, you know everything about your customer. You're, you're going to have so much success when you start to market a media, uh, using media and things like that. So, gotcha. Question. Thank sorry. you. Long answer. No, you fine. Uh, what, I have a quick question. Answer. Are you Jessica? Yes, I am. Um, you mentioned getting a direct mail list mm -hmm. and that's been one area for me where I don't even know where to start to, to look for that, like to go purchase it. I don't know where to start. How everybody, would you go about that? Yeah, everybody, there are, um, you know what your best list is, Jessica, what do you do? What's your business? If you don't mind I, me asking, I'm just starting a business. It is sales coaching and business coaching or business consulting. So Interesting. Uh, helping sales teams, medium-sized, women-owned. Yeah. My favorite list, do you remember that Catalina story that I told you? That was yep. called an internal house-created list, meaning that we were able to, 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 to compile that list off people filling out a form and sending it to us. Um, do you have any customers right now, Jessica? I do not yet. Okay, you are new and stuff like that. Yep. Okay, I'm going to put you on the spot. I can't see your picture, so I'm going to. This is a really good example. Who buys what you have? The person who buys what I have is. I am still working on this, and I recognize that this is an area of opportunity for Jessica, myself. Jessica, by the way, if I seem like I'm trying to make anybody embarrassed here, I'm not. Um, no. If, if this is a hobby, fine, have a good time at it. If you really want to make money off of it, Jessica, I'm going to look you in the eye. I can't see you right now. I just see your name. Yeah. Who are you going after? Yeah. And I am going after smaller sales teams that within organizations that don't have an L&D program that are led by managers, not coaches that could really benefit from and who have like flat year over year growth. And I really do want to target women in sales simply because ah. there are not many out there. You remind me of my client, the Donna Cole School of Court Reporting in the Valley in Southern California. <laughs> Donna Cole had the same thing, too. We did our homework. Remember, number mm -hmm. one, that's what I'm picking you on right now, Jessica, because you're not ready. You're not ready for any other step right now other than to know who you're going after because you're going after too big of a market, first of all. Yeah. It's not well defined, but you you're helping me out here. You're creating in the mailing list world. There are what are called overlays, and mm -hmm. you you just said women. Ah, we just got rid of fifty one percent of the population. Wonderful. Let's get rid of the guys. Okay. Yeah. Um, and whether by the way, this is called positioning. Um, there's a lot of great books. In fact, I brought a lot of books here today to show you, but I'm not going to do it. Um, Al Rise and Jack Trout wrote a book many years ago called Positioning: The Battle for the Mind. A classic. It's, it's old, but it's, it's true. And so what, Jessica, you're you you um, you're not defined well enough. Um, okay. Let me help you out here. For example, um, do you have any um, sales background in a particular industry? I do. I have it in logistics and then healthcare staffing. Oh, my gosh. Okay, sorry. Sorry, that was noisy. <laughs> I, uh, okay, now we're getting somewhere, Jessica. Do you like that industry? Do you feel yourself somewhat of an expert in logistics and healthcare and stuff? Uh, healthcare staffing, 100%, I feel like an expert um, in logistics. I got to tell you, it is a tough industry right now. Like supply okay. chain is 
disaster. I don't want anywhere near it. Wow. Okay, so Jessica, now do you see what we're doing? We're taking this big funnel here. You know, we're going down, mm-hmm. down, 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 down. Do you know how many people there are in the healthcare industry that could possibly use what you do? Uh, tons. <laughs> like there's so many healthcare staffing companies here in, in Salt Lake City. And I feel like there's also host in San Diego. Yeah, there's definitely a, a bunch, but not... Hey. Not too small or not too big, I mean. Okay. Um, your, your market, are you okay going outside of Utah? Yeah. Okay. So Definitely. again, I'm, 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 this is kind of like direct advice. If, if I would go after a very specific narrow market mm-hmm. and when the marketing materials came to that person's desk, I know you were asking about how to get that list. We're not ready for that. When the marketing materials came to their desk, they're going to say, wow, this Jessica is talking to my problems, but we haven't got to your message yet, what your, your problems yeah. are. I had to give a talk several years ago to the, um, the Blind and Deaf Parents Association of Utah. Interesting. I, I don't know why they asked me because I don't have any knowledge in that. And I talked to the owner uh, that was putting this, this program together. It was like a two-day conference, and I was like, they'd be the keynote or whatever. And it was not a big group of people. There was only 50 people in the room. But I said to the person that asked me, I said, I know nothing about this. And I said, do you mind if I send an email to all these people? And she says, no, you can't do that. I said, well, will you send an email to these people? Ask them to go to my website. I created a special website for this particular talk only. It had me talking for 30 seconds. And the, the video was this. Hi, I'm Peter Brooks. I'm going to be coming talking on January 30th. And I'm going to be talking. And, uh, and I do not know what you're going through. I do not know what it's like to have a blind or a deaf child. But I want to make this worth your time. Would you fill out the form? And by the way, on this website, which was nothing more than a landing page, mm-hmm. was a form down there that asked the same question I asked in the video. Tell me the biggest challenge you have in raising a child would you believe that i had 33 percent of the people fill that out before i came and gave my talk wow and you could you and when i gave that talk i had them in 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 tears not laughing i had them in tears because i had reached where they were right here so jessica back to you um you need to focus only on one thing right now and going after a market that's big enough Uh, and when i say big enough meaning that there's not like 10 people in the world that can hire you i mean there's got to be but it's got to be narrow enough so yeah. Again, another long answer here. Go after your market, then yeah, we'll, we'll you'll work on lists later on. There's a lot of ways of getting lists and reaching these people, but you you got to know who you're talking to first with authority and with, with 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 passion, you know. So perfect. Thank you so much, Peter, for the advice. Thank you, Jessica. Good luck. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, this is not Sunday school, guys and gals. You got two minutes to ask me questions here. I I have Hi. a question. And your name is Elise, uh-huh. nice to meet you, Elise. Nice to meet you, Peter. Um, my question is about our company. We have been well established for over 60 years. We're a general contractor here in Utah. Um, we've invented no crack concrete. We really don't have any problems getting clients. Our big issue right now is getting um, people to work on our projects, getting <laughs> workers. So we're starting a new campaign trying to get people to come and that's where we're struggling is it's not the clients. We have plenty of work at trying to get people to build our buildings for us. Well, it's funny you should ask me that because I am an expert in the building industry. Oh, uh, really? I, I am. Uh, and I don't, I'm not going to mention the clients right now in case they're listening and they're going to fire me on the spot. This, the biggest problem contractors are having right now is not in fact, they're backlogged six months to a year, and it's getting people there. Why do you work there? Uh, where I work now? Yeah. Um, I initially got this job because my mom worked here. She had mentioned how much she liked it. And normally, my background is in tech and data analysis, but I needed a break from that. It was kind of a high-paced world, so I decided to come and work for this contractor and it's been a really good experience. It's been, it's been really good. I've been really enjoying it. The reason I ask you that is everybody, again, it's when they get an employment, when they go get a job, is they're asking that question, what's in it for me? I mean, is this going to be a great job for me? Um, the particular client that I work for is huge and uh, we are doing a campaign right now. Um, and what we do, um, believe it or not, this is going to sound crazy, but it's working. Um, we are doing a monthly newsletter 
in print to the 550 employees. And the, the purpose of it is to educate them on company, what's going on with the company, to show them who employee of the week is, um, things of that nature. But we also have in there um, incentives and, if you will, reasons that you want to keep working at this particular company. And uh, so our customer in this particular case are the people you're trying to reach right now. Um, there's certain things you can't control, but you can control that your offers. And so here, I'll give you a, a real specific suggestion. Do you have a, a, an incentive program for referring people? Have you thought mm -hmm. of doing that? Um, is it, is it um, have you found out why people quit and go to other jobs? I don't, I'm going to put you on the spot here at least. Um, how many, what, what's your attrition rate? How many people quit your, your company and go somewhere else? I don't know that. I'm not an HR, but I could find that out. See, what again, I, 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 my, my, my advice right now is general because <clears throat> these are the things I don't want to know. I want to know exactly who you're hiring. Uh, how many of them speak Spanish? How many of them don't speak Spanish? Is that a requirement? Uh, again, this is not racial or any way. This is reality. This is what, you know, because the company that I work for fully, uh, I just found this out, fully 25% of their employees speak Spanish and 15% of them come up on a work visa and then they have to go back to Mexico. I, again, all this knowledge is helpful in how we get them to come back when they come back from Mexico, you know, to, to come back and be with us. Um, uh, is your salary, uh, are you paying enough? Do you have good enough benefits? Have you, uh, are, is it hard for people to get to work? Uh, one thing we're going to be testing is we're going to be offering free transportation from Salt Lake City on Front Runner, and we're going to pick them up at uh, the Provo station and then give them a ride to work because we're doing our homework and finding out that the reason they don't want to work for us is because they live too far away. They can't afford to get here and they don't have any way of getting to work. Again, I'm going back to the M1 of, of uh, knowing my market here. So yeah, these are real key questions to find. And then again, you want to test, 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 test. That's M5. Uh, let's try this and let's see if this works. Um, by the way, the newsletter that we're doing is, is, um, is really, it is working. And the only way we're measuring is how many people got it and how many people are opening it up. And we're finding a side benefit to that is that the spouses or the person living with the person is opening up the newsletter and saying to the spouse, stay working for this company. It's a good company, you know? So anyway, that's a long answer. I wish I had more time to talk to all of you about this specific one. By the way, I'm not trying to end the meeting. I'm just saying that um, uh, it, it's really that the, the, the best marketing people like myself will spend the time to dig, 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 dig. And many of my clients will have me sign a non-compete clause. That's fine. Because uh, they're afraid I'm going to go start a competing business. No, I just want to know what's going on in the head and heart of who we're trying to reach. And in your case, at least, you're trying not to reach uh, uh, customers. You're trying to reach workers. And uh, good luck. I Thank wish I could be more of help. But uh, yeah, find out what's going on in their head and heart, why they come and why they leave. Those are the two main questions. Okay, I will do that. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Elise. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Well, Thank I got to leave you guys. Is there any more? I'll give one more question, then I'm out of here. Sorry, Irene, isn't that rude? I'm done. <laughs> no, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. Does anybody have any other questions? Okay. Well, I want to thank everybody for taking the time to join us today. And thank you so much, Peter. Appreciate your time, your energy, and your knowledge. Um, if anybody has any additional questions, um, please reach out to our business research centers or to Peter. Um, we will send a follow-up email after um, this workshop with our contact information. And I hope you guys have a good Tuesday. Thank you, Irene. Thanks.